Good afternoon. Welcome. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us this afternoon Welcome. as we introduce our incoming superintendent, Dr. Dan A. Sims, as the next leader of the Bibb County School District. Before we get started this evening, I'd like to recognize the members of the Bibb County Board of Education for their great teamwork and diligence in selecting our next superintendent. Board members, will you please stand as I call your name? Dr. Lisa Garrett, Vice President, at large, post eight, remain standing. Kristen Hanlon, District Three, our Treasurer. Murtis Johnson, District One. One Jackson, District Four. Dr. Sandra Woodford, District Five. James Freeman, District Six. Daryl Morton, at large, Post Seven. These are the wonderful, wonderful, great team workers who pull all of these things together. Thank you all. It has been a pleasure working with you all through these difficult times. I would also like to give a special thanks to Rutland High School principal, Dr. Wendy Pooler, and the Rutland students who are helping us with this special presentation. They were standing at the door, ushering us in, Great students, thank you so much. Dr. Poole, as you say, it's always a great day to be a hurricane, and we are happy to be here today with all the hurricanes. Dr. Sims' bio is filled with evidence of his passion and dedication for education and students. I will share just a bit of it with you because I know he will share more of his journey with you this afternoon during his presentation. Dr. Sims is a three-time graduate, graduate of Georgia State University and holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Mathematics, a Master of Education in Educational Leadership, and a Doctorate of Education degree in Educational Leadership. Um, and in 2020, he graduated from the Urban Superintendents Academy through the University of Southern California. His primary training and development outside of his formal education include results coaching certification and summer learning experiences with the Harvard Graduate School of Education and Relay Graduate School of Education. He served as an associate superintendent of schools in Atlanta Public Schools for the past six years, where he directly led and supported principals, other leaders, as they push for excellence and student achievement. His key experiences in this position included assisting in the creation and implementation of the district strategic plan, active participation in establishing and monitoring district level budget priorities, coordinating strategies for aligning departments and resources to support schools and more. During his time as Atlanta Public Schools, he built a reputation of high expectations, high regard for people and high energy and know-how to execute the business at hand. Before being called to serve as Atlanta Public Schools, schools, he spent 21 years with the Fulton County School System, living the unique experience of being a teacher, leader, a coach in the same community in which he grew up. On any given weekday, while teaching and leading in his community, he could easily be found at a local park as a little league baseball coach or announcing it at a Friday night football game. His years of experience, his years of service include leading as a high school principal, middle school principal, middle school assistant principal, high school dean of students, 
and a math teacher. The unique nature of these roles is that they were all held at schools he attended as a student. Dr. Sims, I for one look forward to hearing you share more of your educational journey with our stakeholders this evening. I know they will see your passion and excitement for students and you are built for BIB. As Dr. Sims comes forward, I want to thank every one of you for joining us today in person and via live stream video. Uh, once the presentation is over, we look forward to meeting with you at a light reception following. Thanks to all of you for coming. We appreciate you being here, and we look forward to seeing you afterwards in the reception. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dillard. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I hope you're doing well. It is such an honor to be here uh, on this evening. Uh, just to share a little bit about me uh, and share a little bit about my vision as I make Bibb County, Macon, my new home. It's so great to see you, uh, to all of you in the audience and to those who are on the live stream. Thank you so much for joining us as well. And before I get started, I just want to take a minute to offer up some thank yous. First of all, to uh, Rutland High School for hosting us this evening. Where's Wendy Pooler? Is she here? Dr. Pooler? So we're running, doing what she does. Fantastic. Let's give them a round of applause, please. Great. I'll say more about this picture in just a minute. Also, to uh, my beautiful family, uh, my wife, my beautiful wife Tracy is here. Uh, would you stand up, raise your hand. Step in, she is. And my handsome son, Jordan Sims, college student at Stillman College. He's here as well. Stand up, son. Fantastic. That's one of my sisters from another mission is here, Bridget Bailey. Thank you so much for being here as well. I have a couple of church members I see, brother and sister Veronica, Veronica and uh, Brother Moore, Bill Moore. Thank you for being here as well. I appreciate that. And uh, my daughter Camille, much like me, uh, she's a leader in these streets. And she is the captain of her dance team, and nothing comes before the dance team because she is the captain of that team. So she's not here. I want to thank uh, my board of education. We just introduced them, but I'm so grateful uh, for the relationship we've already started to establish. And I look forward to great things happening uh, as we engage as a governance team. Let's give the Board of Education a round of applause. Thank you. And I have to give my thanks to Dr. Curtis Jones. I want you to know that this has been one of the most amazing transitions from superintendent to superintendent. We've talked on the phone several times. We've texted back and forth. I sat in his office. We fought over who needed to sit in the office. I told him he needed to be in the office. He said, I need to be in the office. And I lost. And he graciously gave up his space as I've been in this transition time. So to whom honor is due, Dr. Curtis Jones, a great man, and I stand in his shoes now, big shoes, for the round of applause for Dr. Curtis Jones as well. Thank you. And then I want to give my thanks to this amazing team. Uh, these are the, some of the key leaders in this district, principal. Assistant principals, directors, senior cabinet. I had the amazing pleasure to be with this particular group in the first week of June down in Savannah for a leadership symposium. And let me tell you, it was nothing but God's grace that allowed for that to happen. For me to establish relationships this early with the critical leaders inside this district, it was unbelievable and something I will forever be grateful for. So let's give a round of applause for these key leaders who are leading our schools and leading this district. With that said, let me take a little bit of time to talk a little, a little more about who I am. Who's seen the miniseries, Who is Dan Sims? Six videos, it's like a little miniseries, right? So if you saw the videos, you've learned some things about me, so allow me, if you will, just to talk a little bit more about who I am as a person and as a leader. Uh, I am, of course, a husband of 26 amazing years. Uh, I'm a son, love my mom and dad. I am a father of uh, three children, one in heaven, my 16-year-old daughter, and of course, my 19-year-old son. I am a man of faith. Um, I have to pause right there because I will tell you, getting to this stage from start to finish was a faith walk. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. 
And you need to know that about me to understand how I plan to lead as your next superintendent. Um, I'm a native of Georgia. I could have already gone somewhere else, I believe, to be somebody's superintendent. Did not want to do that. My heart is in Georgia. My soul is in Georgia. And I'm just thankful to continue my career in the state that I love so much. I'm a community servant. I've done all kinds of community service and plan to bring that same spirit down to Macon. Uh, I love music, love any kind of music. I love any kind of music as long as it is good. So there's something about music that just brings something to your heart and to your spirit, and I believe in the power of music. I'm a 23-year cancer survivor. I'm very proud of that. So you're going to hear people say, man, Dr. Sims, he's energetic and enthusiastic. It's not just this thing that I do. It comes from the core of who I am. And if you know anything about being sick, if you get out of those that situation, it just kind of renews you as a person. And then it comes out of your pores and everything that you do. So you have a cancer survivor superintendent who's bringing all of his heart, all of his soul, all of his, his energy to this great district. And I'm bringing all my golf clubs to this district as well. I am a golf addict. I believe in balance. And uh, that is the way that I keep balance inside my life. So just a few things about me. And I share these things because I think it is important that we not lose the power of humanity and specifically the humanity in schooling. We, we, we are a place, probably the largest organism in anybody's county, in anybody's state, in anybody's city, where active individuals are gathered together most consistently. Think of anything else, run it against it. It'll be the only other thing you can think of is a college or university. We are the largest organism where human beings are together. So it's important for us to see and recognize each other as human beings. I'm that young man who, uh, at the age of, I want to say five years old, who used to go to the uh, store uh, with my friends. And when I went to the store with my friends, my mom told me that I would help them count their money so that they would not get gypped by the cashier. So this love of math was ingrained in me at a very, very young age. I was this fifth grade student who decided I wanted to start wearing some ties to school. As a matter of fact, I wore them in the first grade as well. So there was something about image and presence that was ingrained in me at a very early age. I am that young man, when I graduated from high school, who uh, made a decision because my family was poor to take a full scholarship to Georgia Tech. And upon taking that, that full scholarship, I, I stayed there for about a year and a quarter. It was that last quarter, though, that changed my whole life's trajectory. And I have to tell you about it. Because what happened was I, was, I went to a, um, a uh, volunteer event through Teach for America at an elementary school. I show up at the event thinking just I'm gonna have some fun and help out with some kids, but I left that event changed. At the age of 19, I came back to my dormitory room, I dropped my book bag, and I looked into the ceiling, and I said, I'm doing the wrong thing. I left Georgia Tech, left the state to my second choice, Florida a &M, to become a teacher. People thought I was crazy. But it was at that point that I knew there was something else I was supposed to do with my entire life. And I would tell you that was one of the most amazing and courageous and great decisions that I made. And I stand before you today after 27 years in the game knowing that I did the right thing when I made that decision. And I'm so glad that I made it. I want you to know that uh, back in January, I started a, a tour of making. This was before um, any interviews, before any processes officially started. Because I said to myself, if I intend to apply and press go on an application to become the superintendent for Bibb County, I need to know that this is a place that I can appreciate, a place that I can love, a place I can commit to. So I spent Saturdays going school after school. And once I went to a school, I visited the community. And I drove around different streets, and my, my wife, my rival guy, she, she took notes as, as we drove. And after every single visit of every single school, I went to every single school except for about one or two schools, I was sold that this was a place I knew I wanted to be. This was a part of my faith walk, everybody, as I made these visits to the different schools and visited different communities and ate at the Popeyes and, 
uh, use the restroom in the Piggly Wiggly uh, off of, uh, is it Pilona? That's how you say it, right? Ah, uh -huh, yeah. I'm official now, right? I said Pilona all day long. But, 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 I, but I was sold uh, as I made these different visits. So I, I want you to know that I, I've done so much homework and hard work to be standing in these shoes. And I look forward to continuing to learn uh, individually and from you as I ingrain myself as a part of this great community. Let me talk about my mission. And when I say my mission, this is just my mission as an individual. It's something that I always seek to do. I always want to lead people to discover the best in themselves and then fight to utilize that in every single thing that they do, whatever that is, and specifically as it relates to what they do for individuals. But there's a critical part of what I want to bring as your superintendent, and that's not just what we control. Because as a district, we control what happens in the buildings, we control what happens within the district, and we always talk about that locus of control as our primary area. But I think there has to be a balance of control and influence. That is that we take time to sit down, organization and district, uh, community uh, service, organization and district, uh, business and district, to talk about how we can all be a part of achieving the same outcomes for all of our students. So what I'm not interested in is continuing to just say, hey, let's just focus on what we can control and see how far we can get. No, I want to talk about control and influence. So for those of you who are inside this room who are part of the organizations, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, you are here. Uh, uh, Mid-South, uh, the bank is here as well. I want to make sure that we sit down and let's talk about how we can authentically uh, continue a great relationship that benefits every single student. While I cannot control what Big Brothers, Big Sisters does, I want to influence what they do as I give them a better understanding of what our needs are, and therein lies our impact, that intersecting point. So I want to thank you in advance, if you are here, as an authentically ready person to get engaged in helping out our 20,000 students inside our district. My vision, hashtag built for big. You heard Dr. Dillard say that. Thank you for the gracious introduction, madam. I appreciate you so much. You know it already, though, don't you? Yes, you do. Hashtag built for bib. Let me explain that in just a minute. But let me talk about my vision first. It is to cultivate a strong desire to learn and co-create a path to success for every student. Let me break that down. Now let me use the picture that you see in order to do so. If you look at this particular picture, I think what you would say if I were to ask you to describe what's happening inside this classroom, you would likely say that these students clearly seem to be engaged in the lesson. It looks like they're excited about what's happening as far as the learning is concerned. They are focused. Something good is happening, which it was on that particular day. What concerns me about your in as your incoming superintendent is what happens over the course of time as far as students are concerned. When they get to the fourth grade, the fifth grade, the sixth grade, the seventh grade, and the world starts taking them, taking them in a little bit more. Eighth grade, they grab them a little bit more. Ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, and they start making their own decisions and something happens about that desire to learn. And I'm concerned about that. So that's why that is part of my vision, that they have a strong desire to learn, period. I'm 50 years old, I still have a strong desire to learn because it was ingrained in me. So what I'm talking about is a transcendent effort to make sure that anybody who goes to our schools leaves with a strong desire to learn, but also with a co-created path to their success. And that is that, that we don't just put together a prescription but the student sits down, big brothers, big sisters sits down, the parents sit down, the teacher sits down, and the student sits down. So that everybody's able to nod on what that path to success is. And that's the collective effort that is so heavy on my mind as it relates to the work that we do. But let me make sure you understand what I mean when I say built for big. When I initially came up with that hashtag, it only meant that my experience my passion, my skill set, my past everything has built me to be your superintendent. But it's bigger than that. It literally means that for everyone who has anything to do with any student in any way, from the convenience store owner, to the laundromat manager, to the parent, to the principal, to the teacher, to the bank manager, to the public's uh, associate, whoever it is, to the rec center director, whoever it is, 
that every single one of those people, their skills, their hearts, their decisions, their perspectives, their training, development, and their decisions are built to meet the identified and specific needs of our students. So my goal as your superintendent is to make anybody who says they have anything to do with any student at any time built for the needs of those particular students. And I want to ask you a rhetorical question. Do you feel like you are built for bid? And if you feel like you are great, we need to sit down and make sure that you understand those specific and necessary things for every single student so that what we do is not just cookie cutter, something that we found down the street, a great program, but truly something that is targeting the needs of our students. So hashtag built for bib is all of us, not just me. I wanna make sure I make that plug right now. You will hear it over and over and over. And I would like for everybody to be able to say, once you get engaged in the work that we do for our students, that you too are built for bib. And imagine, if you will, 20,000 students surrounded by adults working together, all feeling that they are built to meet the needs of those particular students. Do you know how far we can go? Think about any time you've seen one or two or three adults on the same page and there's a child. If those adults are on the same page, miracles can happen with that particular child. Let me underscore what I'm talking about. Because we need to understand or be reminded of the fact that the environment affects every facet of every student's life, including yours. This, what you see on the wall, is the, uh, it's called the Bronfen Brenner Ecological Model. And essentially what this model says is that if you look at all these concentric circles, you have the immediate family household, you have schools, you have neighbors, you have cultural groups, parks, safety, child care, all these different community aspects. And what it suggests is that the child is at the center of everything happening around him or her. And since that child is at the center of everything happening to him or her, that means that everything around that child has some level of effect on that child. We've made egregious error by thinking or feeling that the public school alone is in place to make everything happen for a child. Absolutely false. I'll give you an example. Let's say hypothetically, if, uh, and just to let you know how I think, if someone called me one day and I was a parent, hypothetically, of, of a Jordan Sin who was in the first grade, this wasn't his case, he knew how to read way past that time. But if they called me, the school called me and said, hey, your son Jordan has a reading deficit and uh, he's two grade levels behind. My next immediate response based on this model should be, okay, what do you need for me to do? If I am the rec center director and Jordan Sands comes and plays at the rec center every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 4 o'clock to 7.30, and you tell me, hey, Jordan could use some help in reading, then the rec center director ought to say, okay, what do you need for me to do? And it is when all of these individuals get on the same page with that child at the center that we can reach and move mountains. So no, this is a core of my philosophy of shared accountability, shared values, shared engagement, which can lead to shared success. So please know that as I come as your superintendent, as much as I can, I will be pounding the pavement, meeting with individuals, but authentically engaging in such a way that what you do and what I do and what we do together is designed for the needs of our particular students. You will see this again. But it makes you ask the question, what does this mean for us? I think all of you will agree. I want to ask you right now to stand up if this world right now is in perfect shape, in your opinion. Matter of fact, stand up if you feel like this current world is in perfect shape. And as you keep your seat, I want you to secondarily ask yourself this question. If we intend to make this world any different from what it is right now, where is our best bet? Is it me? Is it individuals who are already established, already have ways of thinking, uh, already have habits? Hard to change us, is it, am I right or wrong? Hard to change us. But we can bring ourselves together on a common way to make this world a better place. I submit that our best bet at a better world is our children. And if you agree with that, then that has to be the place that we decide to work together. So I wanna make sure I backdrop this whole a plea, if you will, that I'm making right now for those in the audience to authentically become engaged, involved in what we're doing as a district. 
If you are already there, God bless you. We would not be where we are right now without you. If by chance you are not, we invite you. I don't indict you. I invite you to come and be a part of what we're striving to do. But it's because I know we all agree. We just said it. We are all on the same page regarding a better world that we would like to have. And with that in mind, I want to make sure you understand my definition of the word student. I think that's a note for me. I'll see how sick that was. <laughs> okay, great. All right, got it. Here's my definition of student in terms of everything I just talked about. It is a necessary world function where big people work with little people to make better people for all the people. I want, you, I, want, I want to let that sink in for a minute. When I say big people, all I mean is established individuals who already have careers, already parents, already in place. When I say little people, all I mean are students who uh, are, are trying to find their way, figure, them, figure themselves out. Every single one of you is a former figure themselves out student. Everybody in here, at some point, you had no clue. Raise your hand if you knew exactly everything you're doing right now, you knew exactly that's what you were going to be doing at the age of six. Right. It, it, it just doesn't work like that. But what does work is that you get big people in your life, and they get on the same page. And then they find some little people and say, hey, let's work uh, uh, towards the same goal with these little people. And why do we do it? Because we're sick of the world that we're living in right now. We wouldn't mind seeing things better. Our best bet is our students. But this is my definition of schooling, and I want you to get behind this idea of schooling. And when I say schooling, I'm not just talking about the school. Schooling happens anytime learning is taking place, wherever that is. The pandemic taught us that, or reminded us of that. How many of y'all, how many of you sat, sat down at the table while mom and dad were cooking, working on your cursive, or, or grabbing a book, or working on your penmanship? Learning happens everywhere. Somehow we lost the spirit of that, and this is our time to regain that spirit if we want to see things move, and move in a great way. With that said, I want to talk about an equation for more victory. And the more victory piece will make sense in just a minute. Prior to the pandemic, we had what we called school. Nobody was thinking about a, a shutdown. It was the last thing on our mind, March 13th, 2020. Who remembers March 13th, 2020? Things were pretty regular. Now, if you go back uh, and, and review, I want to go say go back to around January, there was a little corner article in a lot of major newspapers that said something about this thing called coronavirus. And it went right over our heads. Little bitty article, which now has become a world pandemic. However, when we transitioned to the pandemic, guess what continued to happen? Teaching and learning in a very different way. Prior to the pandemic, I can guarantee you that a majority of, of uh, educators said something like this. Well, we really can't control what happens in the home. And then the pandemic happened. And guess what? We control what happened in the home. But there was some learning that happened. And not just book learning, but learning on the part of what we saw as new, innovative, great ways to continue learning. Shame on us if we come out on the other side and we do not take time to re redefine what we call normal in terms of teaching and learning. I would submit that we are in a prime position to make sure that anywhere, anytime learning happens for any student at any time. They call it learning loss, I call it unfinished learning. In that you, your, your normal way of learning got taken away from you during that time frame. We made the best thing happen during that time. We learned during that time. And now we combine these two realities of what happened before the pandemic and what happened during the pandemic to create a new way of what learning should look like. And if you really want to catch up students, that's something that you must do. So we'll be spending some time as a district talking about this redefined normal. And we look forward to engaging with you as well as we align on what that redefined normal looks like. Well, let me go ahead and give you a heads up. Part of it will be that wherever our child goes, there's an opportunity for him or her to learn based on his or her needs. That's the primary part of it, and it's necessary. As I keep moving, there's some top of mind questions I wanna make sure we put on each, other, each other's minds as we get ready for what I know will be a great journey together. The first question, how do we ensure the people we count on feel valued, 
and authentically involved. I'll tell you the way I operate. I believe that if a person wants to help us out, authentically help us out in terms of educating our students, that person should feel valued by the district. That person should have a level of clarity inside their heart and inside their mind in terms of what they have been called to do to support our community through the district. Number two, how do we narrow ourselves down to the most valuable practices, processes, and priorities as we engage in re reaching our goals for our students? One of the things that school districts are great at doing is it's not Bibb County, there have been other districts that did the same thing. We would, we would do certain things, um, and we find ourselves on doing things overload. And this is a very careful space you gotta be, be, be cautious of. And as I continue to do my 90 day entry plan, one of the things I'm carefully looking at is the things that we're doing and whether or not we have narrowed ourselves down and agreed on the most valuable way of performing the work that we do. And then once we agree on that, then we dig deep in those particular areas to see optimal impact. One of the things that's happened over the pandemic Nationwide, teacher burnout. One of the reasons teachers are burned out is because teachers are doing too much. And we own that. So I'll be looking at how we can narrow ourselves down and agree these are the most valuable practices, these are the most valuable processes, these are the most valuable priorities, and this is where we move. Number three, how do we move towards vision and purpose driving all of our moves for our students? And what I simply mean is this. If we say we intend to get something done, I want us to go ahead and have a vision of where, where we uh, want it to end up. I was had a great conversation with great brothers and big sisters uh, sitting down here. When we sit down for real, for real, we're gonna have a conversation about what's, what's the vision behind that relationship. Where do we want students to be as a result of that relationship? And then we align ourselves on what the core purpose of that relationship is. And then we move in that direction. That's how you really get some things done. Versus, now I'll say that I've been a victim of this. I've been that person, but more of a suspect because I, I've been that principal that brought in a program, but really didn't do my research. Brought in some certain practices, but really didn't study to make sure it was the right thing to do. So that lacks vision and that lacks purpose. And I wanna make sure that we move with vision and with purpose in everything that we do. And then the last one, all the more important in light of what has happened in our world most recently, what's happened some years ago. What happened some years ago before that? When we've lost children. How do we ensure every student and every employee can report daily to a place that's safe? We want to be a safe haven for everybody. And I'm thankful for the protocols I already see in place, but we're going to make sure we go back and restudy to ensure that we are the safest possible environment for everybody. And when people feel safe, they can thrive. You'll see these questions again. People have been asking me about VIP. I got my pen. Let me tell you something. When Dr. Jones pinned me, I felt so proud. And let me tell you why I felt proud. I felt proud because from a distance, I paid attention to the VIP movement. From a distance, I paid attention to Dr. Jones. And I admired the work that I saw. And one of the things that I believe is that a superintendent should not come in and just blindly have his or her agenda and then execute with no questions, no probing, no studying, no good understanding of where the district currently is. And one of the things that I do know is that VIP has established a foundation for the district. So similar to how I got a master's degree, I didn't throw out the master's degree. When I got a doctorate, I didn't throw out my master's degree. I just kept building upon my knowledge. And that is what we will do. We will build upon VIP. So keep wearing your pins. I will wear my pen. There will be no rebranding this year. This will be a year of conditioning. So now let me talk a little bit more about some of the intricate details of my vision uh, up to date. So a couple of things are happening right here. You like that, don't you, Dr. Rogers? A couple of things are happening here. Um, when, when I survived cancer, I went and bought like every Superman shirt known to man. And that just became, it became my alter ego, if you will. 
But it became my alter ego because if anybody knows the Superman symbol, anybody know what it stands for? It stands for what? Anybody? Hope. Question mark. It stands for hope. So that symbol, when you see that diamond symbol, it should give you hope. But on top of victory and progress, we have more victory planned. MVP. But I want to make sure you, you understand conceptually what I mean when I say MVP. Because what I don't intend to do is just have a gimmick of an MVP and start calling everybody MVPs without some deep understanding of exactly what it means. And if you've been paying attention, I've already given you some clues. So as I think ahead, I want to share with you what I like to call the MVP cream. Let me restate. This is not a year to rebrand, to, to gut. This is a year of conditioning as it relates to the thought process behind the MVP creed. Look at the first one. We will define and operate through our most valuable practices tied to every goal, every strategy, and every effort. That is so critical to do, to ensure that everything is based on what we found to be the most valuable way to do it. Number two. We will motivate and value the people responsible for our student success, including our students. I believe that teachers, uh, principals, assistant principals, directors, they should feel and see the value that we have on them as individuals. And one of my goals is to make sure, as it relates to where we already are, as far as the value system is concerned, to build upon that and make sure that everybody feels valued. And if you are a community partner, we want to make sure that you feel valuable as well and that you see how much we appreciate who you are as an individual. Thank you. And number three, we will move with vision and purpose, collective purpose, for our students and our community. If I go back real quick, let me bounce all the way back, so I want to make sure I tie all of these together. If you go back to this, the most important part of this model is that if you have some level of influence on what's happening in the life of a student, and you can get on the same page and move with the same vision and operate with the same purpose, something really great can happen with that child in the middle. And if you listen to anybody successful, they talk about their parents, they talk about their neighborhood, they talk about the guy down at the rec center, they talk about the person at the grocery store, they talk about Willie down the street, they talk about all kinds of individuals who all fan into them. Can we please be that for every single one of our students and see how far we can go? Our student-centered focus moving forward will be very simple. We'll focus on people, down to the individual. Let me offer this example. I want y'all to think hypothetically, if we had, um, in all of our schools, one student per class, that's it. Chip, one student per class in every single one of your classes, that's it. And then somebody comes and asks you, well, what, what's, what's your game plan? You're like, man, that's easy, right? Focus on that one student and make sure we know that one student's deficits, that one student's strengths. What does that one student want to do in life? Uh, who, is, who does this one student want to be? And then everybody corrals around that one student. Okay, great. And I argue we, we will be wildly successful, wouldn't we? Let's take it to two. Two students per class. You probably say the same thing. Man, no problem. We got it. We can move mountains with two students. The whole big brothers and big sisters comes in and just works with two students? They would be all over the Oh man, miracles would happen. Three students. 30 students. 35 students per class are reality in some cases. Here's the question I have to everybody. Why does our approach change when we have more students? At the end of the day, we still have to get down to the individual. How did Dan Sims become Dan Sims? People focused on me as an individual and not this mass-produced person in this class with 30 other, other, other people. That's how I was success, successful. And I want the same thing to happen to every single student inside our district. Learning, and of course, with an emphasis on the gateway to success, and that is literacy. And I need you to know, when I talk about literacy, I am so in tune with what's happening. I want to be so in tune with what's happening at first grade, second grade, third grade, every single grade in terms of a child's literacy, deficits, and strengths. And to the extent that we're able to, I want us to be a district where we can say every single grade level, we know how to identify where a student is, where a student is not, 
and we can make them fly as a result because we've targeted what they need, we've identified our most valuable practices, we move with vision and collective purposes, and they will be ready and more ready as years and years pass by. They will make progress because of that. And then they'll make progress because we've identified our priorities in terms of our needs, our priorities in terms of the direction that we're gonna go in, and I look forward to the continuation of my work in learning as much as I can about where we currently are, but not being the superintendent who comes in and says, okay, well, here's what we're doing next. No, I will be a thought partner. Oh, far be it from, 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 from me to come in and not take advantage of the incredible intellect already in the district. I've had some great one-on-ones with my senior captain. And one of the things I'm convinced of is that I have a hard group who's ready to work together. I've had some great conversations with my leaders inside the schools, and I'm convinced that their heart is in the right place. I'm also convinced that they are silly as all get out. I saw them have a good time together. And I saw them learn together already. Relationships. What will this year focus on? Well, the first thing I want to do, and I've said it over and over and already, I want to listen, I want to learn, and I want to collaborate as much as I possibly can. If you paid attention, I, had a, uh, I have a bachelor's degree in mathematics, which means by nature I'm a problem solver. If you intend to solve a problem, you got to sit still long enough to see what the problem is. And until you do that, you don't start trying to solve any problem. So uh, a, a, a focus of mine as I listen and as I learn and collaborate is to listen for trends, listen for opportunities, and do my best job to help everybody become strategic thinkers inside the district so that what we do, we do with further. Number two, we want to shore up the VIP foundation. As we've already laid that foundation, it's so important for people to know we won't have this, this massive new set of learning, but we will engage in new ideas. We will engage in a new, a new vision and a new focus at the appropriate time. Number three, build a path moving forward to MVP. I just gave you a teaser tonight, uh, but again, this will be a year of conditioning in terms of the concept that's behind it as a build upon foundation from VIP. We want to make sure we publicly address the perception of the district. I've heard from more than one person that there are different perceptions of the district in terms of what we can and cannot do. And what I've also learned is that I believe it's based on people not having the best information. And I, I want to say we own that as a district. If anybody ought to be telling our story, it ought to be us. We should be way out front. And anytime anybody else wants to come in and try to communicate a story about the district, people ought to say automatically, well, I heard one, two, three, four, five different times uh, from the district, and I'm pretty crystal clear. Matter of fact, look, here's the, here's the blog, here's the video, here's the link, here's what's going on. I whip myself, listen to my child, listen to my teacher, listen to me. And I want everybody to get to a space where if, if you're not there, I don't know who this is. If you're not there in terms of fully understanding and being a faithful supporter of Bibb County Public Schools, I invite you to come and let's engage. Let's get ourselves the same information so we're on the same page and we can be one unified community for our students if we want this world to be a better place. I want to engage in the quick win. Every time I see an opportunity for a quick win, and I want to train and, uh, uh, and, and unleash everybody in the district to look for the quick wins. And if we see it, let's get it. And let's celebrate. And let's build from that quick win. I want to collaborate. We're going to be collaboratively developing the 2330 strategic plan. I don't know if it'll be seven years or not, but I do know this. When you do strategic planning, you have to give it time. And if you give it time, that means it's, it, it has to be built in such a way that it considers where you are at a baseline, and it considers the vision of where you plan to go at some year, and everything in between is built collaboratively. Collaboratively. So please know that there will be opportunities for everybody inside this room. Parents, community members, civic organizations, board members, of course, and the district personnel to be a part of this strategic plan development. Let me pause for the calls because y'all are really quiet. I guess you are because I'm doing all the talk. Any students in the room, would you stand? Students, stand up. Let's clap for these students. Give it up for these students. Great. I, I, I didn't see you in the room. All right, great. Um, it's just four of y'all. What school? Rutland. Southwest. Southwest. Rutland and Miller. All right, fantastic. Great to see y'all. All of this is about y'all tonight. It, it, it might look 
like it's about me? It's not. It's about you. Any parents in the room? If you don't mind, please stand. Bibb County parents, anybody here? Thank you so much. Girl, parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, fantastic. 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 And we want every single one of you to feel that the best possible everything is happening for your student in every single classroom, every single day, in the safest environment possible. Community members, would you please stand? Anybody? Community member, where are you? Fantastic. 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 I will be leaning on you to truly be a community member. Again, if you already are, great. But if not, I'm coming for you because I need you. And we need each other. Uh, what category am I leaving out? I have, I, have, I, have, I have my great board members. Great board members, you don't mind, just wave your hand. Please stand real quick. Really appreciate these individuals. Round of applause for my board members once again. Great. Uh, my school leaders, school leaders, teachers, school leaders and teachers, personnel, district personnel, please stand. I'm going to do my best job to get us on the same page and keep us on the same page for 180 consistent days. And then sit down that summer to work even more on getting us on the same page. Did I leave any categories out? Did I cover everybody? Fantastic. I did that? Who did I miss? Oh my gosh, business leaders, thank you. That, that would have been community members. Yes, business leaders, thank you. Fantastic. And I'm glad you called that out because when I thought about community members, I thought the same, but the importance of business leaders is that business leaders count on us, of course, to patronize their businesses. And what I want to do is make sure we have a reciprocal relationship between business leaders and the district because we, so we, we're doing the same thing. We're supporting families as much as we possibly can. So as much as we can align on that, I look forward and excited about making sure that that happens. Thank you, brother. Oh my gosh. I said community members, but I need to go ahead and break it down. Faith-based leaders. Faith-based leaders. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. And one of the reasons I did that call out, and I don't have any notes to make sure I cover all those groups, but thank you for that call out. I want to make sure that we have specific times to engage together. Faith-based community, community organizations, business leaders, parents, etc., so that we're clear about where everybody is in terms of where we are as a district and how we can work together to better support our students, which will help us to align on our redefined norm. As I get close to a close, I want to now talk about this idea right here. It's a very simple word, but a very deep word, and a word that's going to really help us better understand where we need to try to go as a district. And the word is simply me. I want everybody to act like you're a child real quick, okay? Y'all was first grade, uh, y'all were high school, middle school, uh, pre-kindergarten, uh, middle school, y'all were high school. When you go to school on any given day, who's the most important person to you? Let's try, let's try it again, let's try it again. Everybody knows the grade you're in, right? When you go to school every single day, who's the most important person to you? When it comes to um, learning anything at any time, who's ultimately responsible for making sure that that happens? Me. To some extent, yes, me. Y'all, I want to make sure that we have a me focus. And when I say a me focus, it goes back to what I said about focusing on people, but down to the individual. And let me underscore what I'm talking about. Up to a certain time in your life, we all went through this where we went pre-kindergarten, kindergarten, we learned how to read, learned how to write, learned our letters, learned our sounds. It was me learning content, me learning numbers, me learning how to add, me learning how to read, me learning the states, me learning capitals. But up to a certain point, it all happened to every single one of us. We looked in the mirror one day, and you started to develop what we call identity. You saw yourself as a person. You started to see what you liked, what you didn't like. You started to favor yourselves towards uh, certain subjects. You know what happened to you? You started learning me. So up to a certain point, it's me learning. Then those words change, learning me. And the reason I share that with you this afternoon is because I want to make sure that we recognize 
When that transition takes place, and while we continue to teach content from pre-K to 12th grade, we capture that point when a child starts learning who they are. And we lean in before the world leans in and help that child to unleash who he or she is. If I were to go around this room and ask all of you, when did you realize that you wanted to be what you wanted to be? If you looked, worked hard enough and thought hard enough back, there were indicators over the course of your young life and something was revealed to you. I look back when I started really liking people, I knew I just wanted to like, I just wanted to just love on people as a teenager. I found out my love for math as a first grader. I can tell you everything that I am right now and chart it back to a time when I learned who I am. So it's so important for us to understand that transition. And it'll be a core part of my philosophy that we operate in such a way that we look for every chance to unleash who a child is and help him or her understand it. And once they understand it, focus on what they can do. And as we dream ahead, I want to give you another teaser about what I call the me initiative. Right now we have the three E initiative. Enroll, enlisted, employed. I want to take that to the next level. Because as you start to understand who you are, I believe it, it should not be that you just decide to enlist in the army. You should be motivated to enlist. Because you've gotten good information. Good recruiters came in and gave you solid information about the career opportunities. And you said, yes, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. I don't want you just to enroll in college. I want you matched and enrolled. We can't just look at me. Was I matched and enrolled? No, I was not. I was on full scholarship. I was enrolled, but I was not matched. And because I was not matched, I left the state, left money on the table to do what I should have been doing in the first place. It would have been great to have adults in my life say, you know what, Dad? You're good with people. You silly. You love math. Why not teach? Can I tell y'all something? Somebody did tell me that. <laughs> it was just one person. Let me take it all the way back. It was just one person. I needed more than one person to lean into me and tell me what it is I was supposed to be. I don't want people just, just to just be employed. I want us to have our students meaningfully employed, which means when you leave and you go straight to the workforce, you have a career. You have retirement potential. And we look for those top tier careers, opportunities right out of college, time to, tied to a Hutchins College and Career Academy, and all of the different uh, stems of learning that can happen in everybody's high school to truly get students ready for that. That, my good people, is the ME initiative. We will talk more about it. And the most important part about the ME initiative is at the end, the students when they graduate, they're ready to make an executive decision. Which means you sit down and say, I am sure this is what I want to do. Not, I don't know. I'm not sure, I guess I want to go to No, no, by that time, we want to make sure we help kids learn who they are and then move forward. We'll hear more about this in the future. Let me lastly talk about my strategy behind the 90 day plan. Um, in my first phase, where I currently find myself, it's just a time to engage, as I'm doing tonight, to collaborate and evaluate things as I see it, but be more of a thought partner with other individuals. In phase two, um, which is an overlap of phase one, is to listen, learn, and share. So that we're all on the same page. As much as I humanly can, my calendar will be full with opportunities to listen and to learn and to share. And I will tell you right now, it's been a great journey pre my first day. I'm on what they call consultant days right now. I've spent about 10 days already on the job, and it has been rich to get that head start. And then finally, to a problem solve, plan, and implement. And what will happen over the course of time is that these opportunities will overlap, of course, as we engage and get ourselves deeply ingrained in our relationship, superintendent, and the community. The goals of the 90-day plan are, are as you see. And uh, I put in bold what's happening tonight. This is my opportunity to start establishing public trust, confidence, and open communication among stakeholder groups. And I look forward to doing even more of these kinds of things so that we can have some more back and forth communication at the appropriate time. But I want you to see what's at the heart of my goal. And what the heart is, is improving student achievement and related support framework. So not just that we want better achievement outcomes, but everything that supports that student achievement, we want to make sure that is improved as well. And quickly, 
each, in, under each one of my goals, and I put these in bold because we want to make sure that we pay attention to what we call the College and Career Readiness Performance Index, which is this whole host of indicators that tells us as it relates to milestones testing, our graduation rate, and related performance and progress of students, how well we are doing in terms of academics. We want to make sure that we decrease the achievement gap in identified areas as we look at our different groups of students. And then, of course, to increase grade level content mastery. How do you make a student successful? Grade level by grade level. So if you can increase that grade level content mastery every year, whether you're a high achiever or a low achiever, that is how you put that continuum together so that the kid graduates successful at the end of the school year. So I'm gonna be very um, uh, uh, specific about ensuring that we are confident about what's happening at every single grade level. And not just, how's elementary doing? Nope, let's talk about kindergarten. First grade, second grade, every single grade. And let's learn as much as we can year after year so that we can be better. My second goal is to ensure effective team governance through productive and positive board, superintendent relationships. So my board and I, we, we will spend very targeted time together because the better our relationship is, the better this district is. And I will tell you, I spent hours watching board meetings over the course of, of, of these past several months. I went as far back as I could to get my hands on, just to get a good understanding, not just of how things operate, but who these people are. And let me tell you, one of my deciding factors to press go on an application, is these people. Once I got to understand as best as I could who they were as individuals, read their bios, I can introduce any one of them right now with no paper in front of me, because I wanted to know who are these board members, and can I work under them? Can I work with them? Emphatic yes. You're right. Number three, establish a culture of public trust, confidence, and open communication among stakeholder groups. I want to make sure that you have a meaningful introduction to me. If I could quickly call out Stephanie Hartley, could you raise your hand? Uh, and uh, what's Jeremy? Jeremy here? Did he leave? I just want you to know who's responsible for the Dan Sims miniseries. So those, those, those two right there. Outstanding job. I start to like myself better looking at those. So, wow, like that's me? So it, it was great. And of course, I want to hear your voice. And I know that time is going to come. I think you have a QR code on your, on your, on your flyer. Please take that seriously as I hear your voice and continue to receive uh, what's on your mind as it relates to concerns, opportunities to engage, et cetera. I need to hear all of that for the sake of a better world. Number four, just talks about the management of the organization, operations, facilities, et cetera, to maximize the use of resources with our taxpayers' support. And it's so important that we are, are fiscally responsible. So this is a core part of making sure that everything that we do from our facilities, from our operations, from our resources, it is done in such a way that we maximize what it is that your dollar goes towards. And then number five, increase my own knowledge. I think it's so important for me to continue to be a learner. Let me tell you what happened to me uh, immediately after uh, my official appointment. I started waking up all of a sudden at five o'clock in the morning. So I'm taking my own time to read and study and learn and learn as much as I can. I want to be the best possible superintendent I can for you. And that requires that I take some time to continue to learn. Lastly, I just want everybody to get yourselves ready um, to do something superheroic. I can't say it any other way. And what I think will be superheroic is if we all join forces. Who remembers, uh, what was the name of it, y'all? Super Friends. Who remembers Super Friends? They dating themselves, right? They, but, but, but you, had, you had all the, all the super friends, they all, they all had their various ways of saving the world, right? Of, of, of coming in, identifying a problem, and engaging. Superman could fly. Spider-Man could swing from, from spot to spot and tie people up. Um, the Earth, Wind, and Fire group. Remember them? The Wonder Twins? Wonder Twin Powers activate. Who remembers that? <laughs> Shape of <laughs> a horse, form of water. But what they did, I, I think what got over our heads, y'all, that was one of the best examples of people with different strengths coming together to do the same thing. Of course, as a kid, we didn't think like that. But as I reflect upon it, that was the best example.
example possible. And based on whatever the issue was, somebody would jump in. That's all I'm asking, y'all. So when you see this, that's what I'm asking from you. I'm going to jump in to the best of my ability based on all of my skill sets. And all I'm asking is for you to consider your skill set and consider how you can be a part of this next journey. I want you to know that I took this picture um, mid-January. And as I look back at Bibb County School District office, I simply said to myself, y'all, and please don't take this as arrogance, this is just pure faith. I said, on that day, I will be the next superintendent. Just say it. I got to work. And with all due respect, I haven't stopped working. And with all due respect, I won't stop working. And all I'm asking is for you to join me. It's been a pleasure to have this time with you this evening. This will be one of several engagements uh, that we will have together. And I just want to say to each one of you, thank you in advance for leaning in and making Bibb County, making this world a better place through our students. information, already done it, already did it to some individuals, so that we can truly get on the same page. I would need you to know as I close, I'm at a point in my career, I have nothing else to prove. For me. Everything I want to prove is through somebody else. So I am coming to you as selflessly as I can as a superintendent, laying my whole heart and my whole mind and my whole soul out for the sake of this city, of this county, for our students. Please join me. I'm ready, I'm ready to okay. And with that, do, do I dismiss everybody? I haven't done that in a long time. Okay. Okay. Well, well now, if you're going to hang around, great. I'm going to be in the atrium as well. If you can join us in the atrium for some refreshments. Again, thank you, Dr. Cooler, the Rutland High School family, all of you. You are amazing. And uh, let's do this. God bless you.